Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. This is going to be one of your favorites. I guarantee it because it's already one of mine. I did a call in my Balloon Boss Mastermind Facebook group and I asked the members, what is something that you keep in your balloon kit that is a good idea to share with other people? And the reason that I wanted to basically crowdsource this episode is to show off the value of being in the Balloon Boss Mastermind. So Balloon Coach is the sponsor of this show. So you've heard me talk about Joette. You've heard me talk about Balloon Boss Summit. This is all connected to ballooncoach.com and you can find that link in the show notes. Um, But I really love the mastermind aspect. Knowing that that I have peers who are also paying members who can contribute to either fun questions like today or really difficult problems that you're trying to solve in your business. Having those people to be able to reach out to, for me, is the best resource of being part of um, the mastermind. And we connect through a Facebook group. We also meet on Zoom calls. But today, I am going to be pulling direct answers from Balloon Boss mastermind members um, that were shared in our Facebook group. And on a side note, that's another question I get very often asking which Facebook groups I enjoy participating in. To be honest, I really kind of only participate in Balloon Boss Mastermind because everyone is a paying member and I think that makes a really big difference. Um, People have skin in the game. They are trying to get a lot out of the group. They are trying to contribute a lot to the group. It is a community of people who have committed to growing their business um, and they've committed financially to growing their business Um, versus some other groups. There's a lot of DIYers in there. I'm, I'm much less willing to give away free tips and advice to people who quite frankly, haven't given me anything in return. Um, that is, that is hard, especially when I can see local competitors popping up and they're just kind of dabbling. It's like, I don't, I have a really hard time wanting to give them free information when I have spent years and thousands of dollars on classes and materials and I certainly had help along the way. Absolutely. But the way that I feel like I can pay it forward is through this podcast and also um, in this mastermind group where people are serving me as much as I am serving them. So if you are looking for a great Facebook group uh, and more, consider um, checking out Balloon Boss Mastermind and the link is in the show notes. So with that, let's get into this super, super fun episode. I posted what is one thing that you keep in your kit that people might not have in theirs and just kind of share how um, how it helps you on the job. So I'm going to go through some of these answers. Nikki contributed and she said an apron with pockets. And then she followed up by saying, if you put your company logo on it, it's like a great uniform. And I love this idea because when I'm on the job, sometimes I'm like coming from work or I'm going somewhere after, and I'm not always in like my Wisconsin balloon decor t-shirt. But if I have my apron with a logo on it, if I snap that on all of a sudden, I'm like magically in uniform. So I think that's a great idea. Um, Jamie said she always keeps rubber bands on site. Um, She likes to use 260s, but right now those are getting kind of expensive and hard to find and they absolutely are. So she keeps um, some big just office rubber bands to tie into her garlands or whenever you would normally use a 260. Um, She also said alcohol wipes, which you can get those in like little self-sealed contain like little packets like they they would give you to like wipe your hands if you just got done eating ribs <laughs> you know like those little um packets and she keeps alcohol wipes with her to wipe down surfaces where she's planning to use 3m hooks she cleans off like dust or residue like let's say on a window and then when that dries you're gonna have a really really strong connection if you stick any adhesive or like a 3m hook to hang a garland so that's a great tip Jen has maybe, maybe my favorite tip. It is really, really smart. She says she buys big bags of dollar store scissors and she keeps them with her so that when you're installing and people inevitably will ask to borrow your scissors, 
She hands them a pair of these cheap scissors. And then this part kills me. It's so smart. She puts her logo on the scissors. So she says like, here are some scissors and you can keep those as a gift. And then they have her company logo on the scissors. And you don't have to like watch that person like a hawk and make sure that they give your scissors back. And in the meantime, you don't have your scissors. She's totally like flipped the problem and made it into a marketing opportunity. And I think it is so freaking smart. Way to go, Jen. Um, Joette said nail clippers. This one is a good idea. If you have like a hangnail or you break a nail, um, have something to like either file that down or clip that. There's nothing worse than having like hand or nail problems um, when you're trying to tie balloons. Emily, oh my gosh, another amazing idea. She said she buys these like dollar store pencil cases. So they are fabric with a zipper and they even have like a clear window so you can see what's inside the pouch. And they're meant to like clip into a three ring binder. So they have like three grommets on the side. So she said she buys these and she uses it to store like little odds and ends, but she has a different case for each category. So she has a little penciled case for all of her adhesives. So like you glue dashes or balloon bond or glue. And then she has a different case for like business cards and marketing materials. And then she has a different case for like rubber bands and fishing line and and all of her tie type of things. So she has different pencil cases for each kind of category. And then if you just need one of those, she brings in like one of the pouches. Instead of bringing her entire kit inside, say that you're hanging a quick garland and all you need is your tying materials. She'll bring that little pencil case. Or if you need to bring all of them, you can just put them all on one big binder clip and then have like your whole basically little folio of all of your different categories of um, kit material. So I think that is a really smart organizational way to organize like lots and lots of different little things. I keep my stuff in like a backpack or sometimes a tote. And I know that all of those little things are always fumbling around in the bottom. So that is a great idea that I'm absolutely stealing. Tammy said knitting needles. And this one I actually already have. And I also swear by keep a knitting needle with you. They are great for helping untie balloons and like other knots. So like if you accidentally tie too many quick links onto a strand, instead of popping and wasting that quick link, you can like untie it really quick with a knitting needle. It's just sharp enough to get into that, um, that little loop in the knot, but it's not going to pop your balloons because the end is actually like dull. It's kind of rounded, um, but pointy enough to help. Um, whoa, this one's really funny. Uh, Wilhelmine said, uh, deodorant and peppermints just in case, which is totally true. That is super smart. Um, I want to make sure that I get this one in there too, along the same lines as the, um, deodorant and peppermints. Michelle said, Mr. Rogers mints. So that's the brand. And she says, because it reminds me to be nice when I'm working with tough clients. So I think that is just really, really a sweet idea to like give yourself a little reminder. And she does that with Mr. Rogers mints. Um, she also says a straw for foils. So that's a great idea. Keep like a little miniature straw. If you get like North star balloons or sometimes like any 14 inch like letter balloons, they actually come with a really, a really nice, like little short straw that you can just keep in your apron. That way, if you ever need to add just like a puff of air to something really quick, you have that with you. Um, and I know that someone else suggested a middle, a metal straw. Let me just figure out who that is really quick. I'm literally strolling through the comments right now. Um, Maria said a metal straw and she uses that for double stuffing. So that could kind of serve as two purposes. You could use a metal straw to inflate your foils if you need to, but she also uses them to double stuff balloons if she has to, um, on the fly. So that's a good idea. Um, Yanira says liquid bandage. This goes along the lines of what Joette suggested. Like if you have a hangnail or if you have a cut on your hand, it's awful. Like it's really bad. One time I cut myself super bad on the job and um, like I was bleeding everywhere. Like I was bleeding onto the balloons. It was awful. So I had to like wrap paper towel around my hand and like use tape because I didn't have a bandaid. So many people said band-aids um, and Yanira said liquid bandage. That's a really good idea. You can just kind of paint it on and let it dry. Um, That'll help in case you have like something little, like a paper cut that maybe hurts. But also if you actually have like a bleeding wound (laughs) and you need to stop it, liquid bandage and then maybe a bandaid over that would be a great idea.
Okay. And Roshana said that she brings a kneeling pad with her. So she's in the military and she said it's destroyed her knees. So she brings a little foam pad with her. Um, they sell these either in like gardening departments or like hardware stores, because when people put in hardwood floors, um, they're usually by like the knee pads and stuff like that, but it's just like a little small rectangle that has a handle and you can kneel on it. And it's such a good point. Half the time I'm like struggling to not cry because I'm kneeling on like a gym floor trying to get my columns like into their bases. And if you're working a lot on your hands and knees, um, this little pad is something easy that you could fit in your case with you when you go. Um, Lenore said that last season when we all started doing like outdoor installations and like nailing into the ground and, um, you know, just a little bit more like in the dirt than we used to be. She said that she started carrying like Benadryl and, um, baby wipes because of like pests. So she basically said like, if you disturb like an anthill or you get stung by a bee or something like that being outdoors, it's nice to have some of those emergency things with you, which I think was a great idea. Um, Isabel said that a lint roller is a must have. And I love this idea. I don't have this in my kit, but I should. She said after she does balloons, everything sticks to your clothes. Like you become like a little lint magnet. So to have, um, a lint roller with you, like just to clean up, if you are going somewhere else after that helps, um, along the same lines, I find that the static makes dog hair and stuff like stick two balloons. So a lint roller would be a little bit too sticky. Um, but I have a little leaf blower with me that I use to inflate my, um, my big balloons, like my, my 36 inch balloons, I have a battery powered leaf blower, which is probably my number one thing in my kit. Um, but that is great too on the low setting to just kind of like blow off the balloons once they're installed and it'll knock some of that hair and dust like off the balloons that it's maybe picked up, um, when you're installing. Um, let's see. And I had one more that I wanted to contribute, um, which was a doorstop. I stole this idea from someone else. I don't remember who, but like a a wedge that you can stick under a door. If you just keep that in your car, then when you're loading in, you can prop open doors, uh, instead of having to like put one of your bases or like, you know, finagle your way through a door that just keeps closing on you. Just keeping a rubber doorstop in your car is a really good tip. And I want to end with Gary Ledbetter, who says the best ass that I have is my brain. I'm constantly assessing the situation for problems and solutions to make the job easier. So in his kit is his creativity. And if you have ever met Gary, oh, he, people literally call him the MacGyver of balloons. He has an engineer's mind and he just is always solving problems, always making things easier and simpler. Um, and I just love that idea that his creativity, that his brain is the most important thing that he brings along on the job. So I hope you found that enjoyable. I absolutely did. I am running to the dollar store to get my little souvenir scissors. I'm going to go pick up a lint roller. I'm going to get a kneeling pad and I'm going to load up my kit. So I am super prepared. Um, But again, all of these ideas come straight from the Balloon Boss Mastermind um, post that I did in the Facebook group. And I got all these ideas within like 24 hours. That's the the beauty of it too. This isn't like a long process. You can ask a question and you can get immediate feedback from people who just know balloons and they know the job, like all the ins and outs. They have years of experience. Um, and we help each other become better business owners. So that is the whole point of balloon and balloon boss mastermind. So again, if you're interested in that, you can click the show notes. Um, it's not, that's not my company. I just want to clarify, like that's not my company. Um, I'm just a member and I just enjoy it. And, um, Joette has generously, um, sponsored this podcast. So give her, um, some love, go ahead and check out her, or all of the resources she has available. It's too much to even explain. Um, but I hope you found this valuable and enjoyable, and I hope to have more episodes like this in the future. I'll see you next week. That wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. I'll talk to you next time. For more information about any of the resources or courses mentioned in today's show, please head to thebrightballoon.com or check the show notes wherever you're listening.